So we are here with some of our favorite people, and we know some of your favorite people, and our someone who we know is going to be one of our new favorite people. Um, so we're Amy and Nancy Harrington, the Passionistas, and um, we are here today with filmmaker and Emmy-winning composer Liz Lockman, uh, world's great celebrity chef, amazing uh, activist and advocate Susan Feniger, and our new friend Joan. And Joan, tell me how to say your last name so I say it the right way. I'm Maureen. I'm Maureen. Okay. I so never say it that way. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God we're having this meeting. Thank God. Yeah, good. We never talk, so I never <laughs> to know these things. <laughs> you can watch this will be live on this will stay up on our Facebook page, Liz. So if you need to refer back to I'm it. gonna I'm yeah. gonna put it on a loop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my god. So we have these wonderful women here today because we are talking about Forked, which is an amazing film that Liz is making about Susan and that Joan is editing. So we are gonna let Liz and Susan start by telling us a bit about the film and how it all started and and uh, what it's about. Okay, the, the proper title is Susan Feniger, Forked. That's good. So that way you know who's in it from the title. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Lots of information. You're clever, right? Very smart. And I love oh, yeah. Forked. Forked. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's see. It's about Susan's foray into the solo world of um, her first solo restaurant without her longtime business partner, Mary Sue Milliken. And they were together ha and are still as the two hot tamales on Food Network for years and, and have been partners in many restaurants for years in LA and Vegas. And um, Susan decided to do this restaurant street on her own. And it was the first time and um, I decided that since it was an unusual situation, I would film it. And uh, that turned into the hell of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Taking place in this very room where we are, yes. which took over our whole house eventually for about a year and a half. Yeah, at least not a year yeah. and a half, maybe well, a year. It felt like 10 years, yeah. but... It was probably a year and a half. And then we went to Vietnam and to Shanghai and Singapore street food tasting. And I filmed Susan there. And what else? Well, I, I mean, I think the one of the things about this, about this experience was that Mary Sue and I had been at that point business partners like 30 something years. And we had our business border grill and I think my desire was just, I mean, we worked so much together that we were considered one. I mean, we got like a lifetime achievement award that was like for the two of us. And, you know, it's like, well, maybe it's a half lifetime achievement. You only award. get half the award. <laughs> but, it, and it was also that, you know, we had just, not that we were that big, but we just gotten big enough where, you know, simple decisions would take an hour to make, like, you know, could we spend the money for a blender? Like simple decisions <laughs> like that. So I just, you know, it was, I, I sort of had this passion, desire to sort of get back to just being in the kitchen, not constantly in meetings and just be able to, you know, cook and have it be a small little place. And so that was where that desire came from. And Liz like nagged me enough, you know, saying, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And, you know, finally, it just was like, I mean, after Mary Sue and I figured it out that I would do that and we would still continue to be partners in our other business. So that's where it all started. But it ended up that we said, hmm. let's just I'm going to do all that testing and meetings like and anything testing, here. Wine tasting, all of it, sometimes at the same time. Beer yeah, that's the best way to do it, right? That was pretty interesting. Cocktail tasting. I was filming them actually at one point where they were called into the other room, which also known as our dining area. And um, they were, Sasha and Susan were in here recipe testing. And then they go and taste these different wines that the general manager wanted them to check, check out for the restaurant. I've got these wines in, what do you think? And then they come back to finish the recipe test. And they were both drunk. <laughs> 
And they're not both, drunk. Okay, drunk enough <laughs> that neither one of them could remember how many cups of sugar had been put into that recipe <laughs> or how much butter had gone in. They had to start over two or three times. And Susan, at one point, had started the same recipe like three times <laughs> that she couldn't remember. And she was just staring. And I said, what are you doing? Because I'm behind the camera. I go, what are you doing? She goes, I, I just can't remember what I did. And I said, well, could you do something different? Because I've already got this of you staring at the paper. <laughs> and, and you wouldn't just rewind the video and tell her what was in the recipe. You made her what? test it again. <laughs> hey, I'm just a fly on the wall. You know? I'm, not, I'm not telling them what to do other than do something different. <laughs> Sasha told her, why don't you stare at that paper more dramatically, Susan? That's a, that was her direction. She was asked one time behind the camera to remember how much sugar was put in. And then when Liz was asked uh, 20, 30 minutes later, how much sugar, she said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sasha said that, right? She said, remember this. Yeah. And then she said she didn't trust you to remember it. So she actually knew how much. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Fun. Oh, it, was fun. it was fun. I don't, I mean. I think, Joan, you're looking up at all the footage now. I mean, yeah. it's, I don't really remember it. I just remember we had a blast doing it. <laughs> it comes across in the footage for sure. Yeah. So, so tell us how Joan got involved and kind of what stage you guys are at right now with the, the film. Joan, you tell them how you got involved. Um, so uh, Lisa, who's producing this, she had produced uh, the last feature film that I did. And she wrote me just saying like, hey, cause I, I recently had a second baby. And she was like, I know you've just had the baby, but I've got this film, da, 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 da. when are you starting back to work? And so initially I was like, you know, well, I hadn't planned on doing another big project so soon, but what is it? Tell me about it. So then she told me about it and she sent me the sizzle reel which I watched one night, like in between feedings late at night <laughs> and I watched it. And it was this just great sizzle reel that Liz had put together that is just, I think you just, you see Susan and you just see her and she just shines through. And I just knew I, I wanted to do it. I was like, okay, I, this is probably sooner than I was gonna go back, but you know what? Like it was, just, there's something about how genuine she is on the screen, how much she cares about the people she's with, the food, it was just really interesting. And then it also, you know, was coming, you know, we just spent two years on and off in lockdown. You know, this is a story about like maybe not being able to do, accomplishing what you set out to do, but it's such a great human story with this character who can carry it through that it's funny to talk about Susan as a character with her sitting there looking at me, but <laughs> you know, she's a character. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but, okay, now you know, go ahead, talk. <laughs> thank you. It just, it just felt like a story that I felt, I, there were so many people during this pandemic that I knew who suddenly were like, this isn't what I want to do with my life. I want to try this. I want to try this. Like, um, you know, I know a lot of people, I work in film and a lot of people work in advertising and who are stopping to follow their lifelong passions. So this project about someone who is following her passion, just, I just felt so relevant. And it's like, you know, it, it was just, it was fantastic. And you can see there's this great cast of characters who go along with her and just the love and support that everyone has for Susan is, is fantastic. And, and you can see it, you're just drawn to her the second you see her on the screen. It's, 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 you know, there are a lot of people who are in the public eye who aren't that genuine sometimes, which, you know, fair enough, it's probably hard to be in the public eye, but it just, you, you, I feel like I know Susan and I just want to hug her. And so it's just like, it's, you do, you feel like, you know, her as a person. And so, what, yeah. I, what I think was, was sort of unusual was that, cause I've seen Susan on Good Morning America and all these different shows but Susan with me behind the camera was doing things to make me laugh, yeah. which is what she does at home. She's crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that came through, which is great. Cause exactly. she did stuff like cooking on, on the, and pretending that she slipped and the whole pan went into the camera's face. <laughs> I mean, she would never do that with an actual DP, yeah. you know? So fun stuff, you know, dancing around in her PJs, you know, stuff you're not going to see on Good Morning America. 
<laughs> well, and I think that's what came across in the sizzles. You feel like you're having a conversation with a friend as opposed to, you know, just somebody who's, you know, there's a documentary on them. It's, it's, you truly, you feel like, you know, Susan, and it's because she's speaking to Liz behind the camera and, and you get those intimate moments, which is just, it's beautiful, you know? So um, to that end, why don't we show the clip that you have given okay. us? Okay, right. you put it together a little, well, Joan put together. I said, that's great. You said, we did it. Therefore, <laughs> <laughs> we It was my addition to the- uh, Yeah, to the my class. addition was I was just in it. <laughs> she was sleeping and I said, that's great. And Joan did all the work. And this is just um, Susan in Vietnam. Well, we were in Vietnam and uh, Susan has just discovered um, what they call Café Suda, which is the, uh, the, the coffee- Vietnamese with, coffee. Yeah, Vietnamese coffee. My favorite thing in the middle of a hot, hot day. It Perfect. looked good. Show everybody. All right. Well, here we go. Một nóng bốn đá. I'm going to learn how to make Vietnamese coffee since I've had four of them today. So look at this, how cool it is. So we've got this coffee maker. It's like a French press. Wow, look at that. Look at that, look at that. Okay, so we've got the coffee grounds in. We've got this thing, which is on the top. Pour the water over it. Condensed milk and the coffee is dripping into here. So we're getting the Vietnamese coffee that's been just pressed. So great. So it's being filtered, but it's very, very rich. And we've got our condensed milk. Then are we gonna? Then they put ice. Put ice the ice after. after. That is great. Boy, it's great presentation too. Great presentation. Come on. I love the idea of having a restaurant and being able to take back an idea like this. It's so simple and every day here take it back and have people learn about another world, about what somebody else is doing and their lifestyle. And this right here is definitely the influence for opening up street. I think many people won't travel and sit and eat. I just don't think they will. They're too nervous. They're too intimidated by it. But they miss so much of the experience. I should move here. I want one of those right now. That looks so good. Good. Did you serve those at Street? When we first opened, we did. Mm -hmm. But um, as often with many things, I mean, we ended up, you know, condensed milk and coffee and espresso, you know, just and making it and serving it. Because it, it just gets to be too labor intensive to try to serve that at a table, you know. Sure. But, so, but I think, you know, the thing that, and, and coffee was one, but just in all the different sort of going around and eating street food, a lot of it is, you know, you go into some side alley and you sit, I mean, you're sitting very close to the ground at all, many of these places that are street food. And you've got like all those, you know, little motorcycles and everything going, you know, fast right next to you. And I think there's something really wonderful about being able to understand the culture through the street food. And so that I think a lot of what got shot shows like how cool and interesting the street food tells you the story. So I, mean, I, I love that. You know, Susan had a little bit of a different experience than I did. Hmm. I, you know, she tells the story of the great little chairs and tables. And my experience of that was sitting in these little chairs and then getting up and, you know, the chair came with me. <laughs> It's like, I'm not little like the Vietnamese people. So that was like horrifying. Okay, so Susan's like, this is the best trip 
ever. And I'm like, no, I'm a big fat pig. Okay, that wasn't that fun. <laughs> well, and, and if we, uh, are we right to say you're not an adventurous eater? Yes, you yeah. are right to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it like traveling with somebody whose mission is to try unusual I, things? I made a list, things that make me go ick. <laughs> That's what it's like. <laughs> oh, there was another list, things I will not eat. That was two lists. <laughs> well, there are a lot I, of crossover. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, you know, some like there's, I, I think there's one, one place. Well, there were so many places, but just one place where you were at this little stand and they were doing a noodle dish and they were cutting the sausage to go into it. And it was like this. And then you sat down at, a, really at a low picnic table in an alley and you know there just were these experiences that yes the experience is part of it but the food itself is inspired and to me the inspiration for so much of the food that we eat the you know jewelry that we wear the everything is inspired by street stuff music that you hear and I think we as chefs and just in general, I think fashion designers, they get their, they get their inspiration from the street. And I, so. th I think also that um, what's, that reminds me of when I was looking for an editor, <clears throat> I was talking to different people and I kept talk, um, choosing people who had cut dance movies. Mm -hmm. And I thought, that's so funny, I wonder why? And then Joan had just cut Uprooted, which is the journey of jazz dance. It's unbelievable. Anyone has it, it's on HBO Max, and and um, I, I mean, and I, I I thought, well, I want I there's a flow to this. There's a flow that feels like dance. It's a rhythm. And when Joan and I first talked, she mentioned rhythm, and I was like, that's it, <laughs> right, Joan? Yeah. <laughs> so, Joan, what's it like to like? Come because you yeah you guys shot a lot of footage right so so you know tell everybody kind of your process and how you're diving into the, all of this. Well, that's for me part of the fun. It's 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 I think what makes editors a little crazy sometimes is that we love we want more footage more the better, and it's just it's fun to just like get right in. So initially I just wanted to look at everything. So I spent weeks just looking at everything and selecting. Um, Liz and I had several conversations throughout where we talk about kind of what we're thinking for the overall piece, what we're thinking for individual sections. I always have a big like chalk uh, whiteboard or a or cork board behind me where I just have a bunch of stuff as well. Um, and, and you just kind of watch everything and select everything. Then when we started building it, um, Liz actually has been getting up at what, four, four thirty. Every morning, four forty-five. <laughs> every and morning, every morning, and and does gets on Zoom because I'm in London and she's in LA, and um. So I'll spend my morning putting together some sequences, and then Liz will get on and we'll watch it and we'll we'll rework it, we'll edit it, we'll talk about the next scenes, things like that. So we do we do uh, four hours or so every my afternoon and her morning. Um, working on it together. Then we go through what we're thinking for the next parts and everything. Um, yeah, so it is, it's just, it's just kind of watching everything and, and you have to be putting stuff together, but also kind of have your mind on like, I know there's this that's really good that I don't know where it's going to fit in yet. You just, you kind of have to, it's organized chaos where like everything's there, but you, you know where it is sort of. And, and you just grab it. They just went and shot some more stuff, which I'm so excited about as well. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love it. It's just, it's the hardest part is watching all the food, especially because it's around my lunchtime and it gets me really hungry. And then when they were in <laughs> Vietnam, it was like, I have a favorite Vietnamese restaurant here that does these amazing bun vermicelli noodles. And it was closed for renovation for a month. And what? I was watching like Susan, like saying like, okay, so what's in here? And she was like, and I was like, yes, that's exactly what I want right now. <laughs> so that was really hard. Um, and then they did a, they did a, I cannot cook to save my life, but I enjoy eating food. Although I'm like Liz and I am picky as well, but um, they were doing a bunch of desserts they were trying. 
and I was just watching all these desserts. So I went and like just made a box cake or something that I pretended was for the family and I just ate the whole thing. Well, I we just did these this food shoot last week that was all food, like gorgeous, slow motion, you know, falling into the whatever food, <laughs> mostly because I'm not a foodie. So when I was shooting Susan and ever this whole process, I was really excited about the um, construction at the restaurant and all that. And then we get to here and it'd be like, eh, and I'd be a little bored. So you <laughs> chose, so we had to recreate some food for foodies, so people who care about food. You literally see the camera go off and then it comes back on and it's a few hours later and Liz is like, so what I miss? And they're like, we did all the cooking. Like, <laughs> <laughs> So in other words, nothing. <laughs> yeah, I imagine it'd be pretty disappointing to uh, to watch a movie about Susan Fenniger and not see any food. <laughs> I suddenly realized when we were looking through footage, I thought, oh, I think we're missing something. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. The most depressing part, which is, you know, watching all the construction that's <laughs> happening and that, you know, walk in that's a just completely, a you know, nightmare riddle the, you know, <laughs> bugs and, ah. I mean, it, it was, everything went wrong. Let's put it that way. So it made a good movie. Yeah, yeah. So the movie, just so everybody understands, the movie follows you on your research and everything, but it's also taking everybody through building street, right? Yeah. I mean, I, one, the thing I love is that it's, I think that the travel, the construction and, you know, us cooking in the kitchen is all a vehicle to get you to the end. It's not really, it's not really, here's Susan's life story, that at all. So it's, and it's not just, here's no. opening a restaurant. It's, it's the it's vehicle about, that it's gets It's about you. reinvention. It's about having a passion, a reinvention story and traveling that path and believing that everything is going to work out, which in this case, I'm not going to say anymore. <laughs> no spoilers. It's right. about the pa ultimate passionista story. <laughs> yeah, right. So tell us what stage you're in right now and how much longer do we all have to wait to see it? Well, we're editing and editing and editing. And uh, let's see, how much longer? I mean, Lisa Don Malreve, the producer, keeps saying fall. Mm -hmm. But every time I hear that, I'm worried that it's that we're going to be late. And then I tell that to Joan, and she goes, no, no, it's going to be fine. And then I say, but do we even have a movie? schedule? <laughs> yeah. She's like, we're good. I said, but is there a movie? And she goes, no, there's a movie. Don't worry. I wake up at 2.30 in the morning. There's no movie. We don't have a movie. I've just got footage. You know, so thank God, Joan says, well, first Susan says, don't worry, go back to sleep, <laughs> shut up, you're an idiot. And then Joan, when I say it to Joan, she's like, you're an idiot. She doesn't say that. But well, the, and proof, and it. there we have it. <laughs> there we have it, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think the fall. Excellent. I, and I you have a composer on board, right? Yes, Miriam Cutler. Miriam Cutler is a wonderful doc composer and she um, did, uh, let's see, The Hunting Grounds. She did RGB. She did so many things. You can't even believe it. She's a real, she's also a, quite a well-known Sundance composer and she does all these labs at Sundance. So she's just all around great gal. And she's going to come on board. We don't, we don't have in, enough for her to work on yet. No. I've gotten, you know, when I wake up and it's like, 5.45 and I hear in the other room, I hear Joan and Liz laughing. It's like, oh, well, I hope it's good. And then I go back to sleep. It's something you said the usually. Dogs. Yeah. yeah. Your work is done, Susan. You, you yeah, I know. Thank you God. Be lifting over. And... I tell you that when, I, when we were doing uh, the other day, when we were filming Cooking Again, I thought I'm gonna start, you know, now, because COVID, I'm working a lot more from home, like everybody, or like many people. But I said, you know, I'm going to start doing more and more of these recipes from the street cookbook because the food is really good. <laughs> I forgot the food is really good. So we That's just right. did this muscle dish that was so yummy. Curry, and the kaya toast. Curry, wait, curry. Coconut, coconut curry. Coconut curry mussels. Ooh. And then we did the millet puffs from... You know, that looks good. 
those were so fabulous and the kaya toast and you know, so now I'm just going to start cooking those. And I was thinking, I'm going to do a pop-up in the driveway at some point. <laughs> I don't even know. She's so crazy. Yeah. Please let us know when that is. Wouldn't yes. that be fun? <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should do a movie screening in the driveway. Yeah. Yeah, do yeah. a pop-up there. That'd yeah. be fun. Yeah. Sign me up. Yeah, we're there. I, we, we had the great, great pleasure of going to Liz and Susan's one night and having dinner and... I was prepared to hide in the closet so that I could eat the leftovers after <laughs> it was so good. I can still taste the chili. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Um, so how can we all help you guys? What kind of support do you need from the Passionistas community? This is lovely. Yeah. Just talking to you. Just Are you looking at you. In any Just way? looking at you hurts more. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines from Tequila Sunrise. Okay, what? I love it. It's <laughs> Tequila Sunrise. <laughs> um, I love it. <laughs> what are you guys fundraising for the film? Are you in that one of those yeah. periods? But we're still we're still fundraising because we haven't actually we we haven't quite raised enough money for post production. Mm -hmm. Actually, funny you should mention. Mm -hmm. um, so we are, and there's, we yeah. actually have a, uh, we have a, um, a fiscal sponsorship from Film Independent, mm -hmm. uh, which means that anybody who gives money, it's, it's a 100% tax deduction. Excellent. And we also have, if there are angel investors anywhere, because we have a few angel investors who have come on board, thank God, mm -hmm. um, and they uh, actually become uh, some type of producer, depending on how much the investment is, that's an investment that's different than a fiscal sponsored, you right. know, uh, write off. But um, and then they get VIP treatment at the restaurants whenever they go. That's right. <laughs> and that's where it's a But we are still we are still raising money to get it finished so that, yeah. you know, once it goes to festivals, hopefully that then yeah. it gets, you know, the ability to be finished and marketed in that. So we are yeah. definitely still raising some money. <laughs> yeah. I Not guess, a ton. Well, but. we have, we can, you know, I just, I wasn't prepared for this question. Um, <laughs> but our, our, uh, we have a website. It's Forked the Film. Okay. Um, we can put that in the chat. Forkedthefilm.com. Did I say it again? Yes. You're supposed to say things three times for people to remember them. <laughs> Forked the Film. <laughs> Listen to me there. <laughs> You're getting sleepy. <laughs> You're getting sleepy. <laughs> You're opening your wallet. This is, probably, this is probably illegal on so many levels. Yeah, I'm sure. Forget yeah. about that. Just give them money. Yeah. Yeah. Wouldn't it make a great story, Susan Feniger arrested for illegal? Uh, <laughs> I didn't say that. No, <laughs> no, it would be you, Liz. You would be doing fine. <laughs> She told me what to say. <laughs> Susan would be the innocent party on this one. Don't she, be packing she could slip you a file in a cake that she baked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joan would be packing her bags and then she'd go, wait a minute, I'm in Europe. Yeah. <laughs> There's. You're good. You're find good. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a question from Jolie Elman. I hope I said Jolie. that right. Jolie Elman. Um, will there be or where will the premiere be? Because she wants to be there. We, well, we just said our driveway, Jolie. Okay, okay so we are going with the driveway from there. Uh, I don't know. We don't know well, yet. We don't know. know. But I mean, most likely it'll be L.A. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here's here's how it, I think, is going to go down. Once we have it done, we're going to submit to festivals and then see. And it depends on when we get it done as to which festivals, you know, are going. Right. And, and then see where it gets accepted. So that would technically be a premiere, a festival premiere. We would love, I personally would love a theatrical premiere. I, it's probably old school now, but I oh, still love it. love it. So, you know, LA, New York, if that's possible, feasible, that's so, and I don't know, we don't, there's too much, there's a lot of unknowns, you know? Well, you'll have to come back yes. and you'll have to update us all. Yes. Um, that, that would be great. That would be great. In the meantime, Susan, we keep seeing you pop up on cooking shows every once we're like oh my god there's susan she's on the julia child show <laughs> we get very yeah. excited yeah that 
that was, you know, that was fun. I love, I mean, I love doing anything connected to Julia, of course, that's great. And now I've become, you know, like Mario on Access Hollywood, his best pal. <laughs> I'm like, so cool. Uh, yeah, it's it's been interesting, especially during COVID. I did a bunch of virtual, which was weird doing cooking shows with hosts virtually like that. Um, so, so that's been it, it's been an interesting time, that's for sure during COVID. But you know, now we're sort of back in studio doing stuff again. So that's great. Yeah. What's it like for you to be? You've done so much TV over the years. What's it like to now be the subject of a film that's all about you? Um, well, at first it was like, why are you doing this? I don't even think who would even watch this, you know, but and then she, then she would say like, if someone would ask, she goes, well, it's not really about me. And I go, honey, stop, stop that. <laughs> stop that. It's about you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I have to say with these guys editing and me just getting bits and pieces, I think, you know, I think it's exciting. I think it's going to be very cool. Um, I love the angle that it's sort of been going. So, you know, I think that um, I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm definitely, you know, way more excited than I was six months ago about it. So what was six months ago? I don't know. <laughs> six before Joan. Before, before you and Joe. Yeah. Pre -Joan. DJ, before Joan. Yeah, once Joan. Once Joan came on board, Susan was like, hey, this is really going to be a film. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, thank you, Joan. <laughs> and um, and one last question: Will we be seeing more uh, Chef Not Chef anytime soon? Yes, there's one coming soon. You just got a little teaser, and there's one coming out. I think it's one a month or something. I don't know. Will you tell everybody what it is. Uh, no, you won't. <laughs> what it is? What did we do? What is Chef Not Chef? Oh, what Chef Not Chef? Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> that's Susan and that's Susan and, and me in the kitchen. And I, wait, I, I'm not chef and she's chef. No, <laughs> she's chef. And I asked, no, fine, no. Question. I asked the question of someone who's not a chef mm -hmm. and everyone's afraid to interrupt. Oh, the chef is talking. <laughs> we go, we go visit my mother and the guy who runs the dining room says to her, hello, chef. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I call her that at home too. Anyway, okay. um, we, <laughs> we go and, and, uh, but it, it's, it's, it's the two of us basically arguing about, <laughs> Food, food, yeah, yeah that's Very it. entertaining. Thank yeah, you. We love it. We do. And you're, it. just one last side note, your mom just celebrated her 99th birthday. Yes, 99. Yeah, yep, she did it. She did it. That's so exciting. Yeah, I said something like, I called her and I said, how are you feeling? She said, oh, not good. I said, why not? She goes, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Although she just right. beat us at Rummy Cube. Yes, so she's not that old. No. She seems like she's a shark at Rummy Cube. She is. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing the mind and the way and, it works. And she and you know, a shark is like when they reel you in and act like they can't do it and then they beat you. Mm -hmm. That's what yeah. she does. She's like, Well, how many are we supposed to do again? How many tiles? And I have to remind her. And then what what do I do again? And then all of a sudden she goes, Can I do this? Like as if she doesn't know. And then, <laughs> And then she wins. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, 99 and still, you know, still going. Amazing. Excellent. Well, we will see, I'll see her at the premiere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. In yeah. the driveway. In the In driveway. The driveway. <laughs> exactly. Eating chili. Exactly. Eating chili. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we promised you this would be half an hour and we've already taken more of your time. So um, thanks. Right. thanks so much. We love you all. And we hope you'll come back when things are further along to update us. We will. Absolutely. We will. If, you, if you'll have us, we will. Anytime. Absolutely. Anytime. Thank you. All right. Thanks Thank so much. you guys. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Joe. Nice to meet you. See you later. Nice to meet you.